Hi there, Phil from Productive here. Now you may remember a video that I released a little while ago where I was showing how you could use the JIRA connector for Smartsheet to drive hierarchy within a sheet. Now that worked okay, you could generate one level of hierarchy but it did always feel a little bit like a workaround. So I've returned to the drawing board and I've developed a couple of solutions using Bridge that I'm going to take you through in this video. But before I do that, I just wanted to say that at Productive we are developing solutions like this day in day out for clients all around the world. We want to hear from you if you've got, uh, got questions, you've got comments, you've got problems that you're trying to solve because this is what we do, this is what we love and, um, and it allows us to, to continue to learn and develop new solutions. We can share these solutions uh, more widely with people and help, help the general Smartsheet community upskill and create some really, really good value within their businesses. With that said, let's take a look. In this first example, I have a sheet set up that has a couple of local service centres for vehicles. Each one has uh, the same set of departments and the idea here is that we submit our request as a customer via this form, we select the service centre, we select which department we want and the, uh, the workflow in the background will then sort where that request goes. So if I expand this out, you'll be able to see that we have a series of requests against each uh, department within each centre and they vary, they're, they're, it's not a duplication here. Um, and the idea is that for any new submission, it gets automatically put against the correct department and the correct center. So let's try it out. Okay, I'm gonna put my name in here. I'm gonna select the Hemel Hempstead branch. I'm going to put in, let's say a Renault Clio. And I want an upgrade. I want some new alloy on my Renault Clio. So I will submit that and if we go back to the department sheet what we'll see quite quickly is that new uh, request appear as a line within the sheet. We'll just wait a moment for it to appear or we might have to do a quick re refresh. I think I'll do the refresh. And there it is. But that's not what I promised you. You want to see that appear against the uh, upgrade department within Hemel Hempstead. So we've just got to give Bridge a moment to, to work in the background. And what we should get is a notification like this. There we go. That tells us that the, uh, the automation has run. So let's refresh it. And lo and behold, we have, um, we have our request in uh, against the, uh, the upgrade center in Hemel Hempstead. So really what we're looking at you know, using the bridge workflow is a, is a couple of decisions. Um, we first look at which center has been um, allocated as part of the, uh, the request and then which department. And so the workflow looks a little bit like this. It's just a decision tree. You decide which center you've got and then you have a look to see which department selected. And then we, we use um, the update row to take the, take the, the original row and, um, and change which um, which parent row it's nested under. So if I go back to the sheet, each of these rows has an ID against it. And um, once, once we've identified the right combination of pairs here, uh, we, we know which row it is, and then we nest it under that. This second example is slightly different. What I have here is another hierarchy, but it's not quite as structured as the one that we've seen before. We have a mixture of parent rows and child rows, and I've tried to identify that the, the level of those using uh, the colouring, um, the conditional formatting that I've applied against the level. The idea here is that we can submit a, a, new, um, a new row uh, at any level that we select, and we, we can base that on the, um, on the request ID uh, if we're adding a child, or we can just simply submit a brand new parent. So what I'll do is we'll say, hey, we, we've got, not got anything under test three here. So um, let's take that request number, just take a copy of it. And I'm going to create a new child row. Parent request is that one. And we're going to call it test 2D. We'll submit that. That should have been 3A. But anyway, it's come in here, and it, once again, we'll see the auto hierarchy run. I'm going to quickly change the name of that. Just so uh, it all looks nice and consistent. Save. And you'll see that actually it ran in the background while I was typing that in, and it has nested it under there. 
Now, let's go back and do that again. Let's uh, add in a parent and we'll go for test five. And then we know that test five is likely to be rec 16. So immediately let's, um, let's go and put a child row in here. And so that's rec 016 and that's going to be, let's test 5a, sorry, test 5a. Submit them that in there. And then we can refresh that. You can see that test 5 has come in, uh, test 5a has come in. Test 5a is currently sitting at level one. Uh, and that means the bridge is still running in the background. Give it a moment and then that will be indented under test 5 as well. Uh, what I also want to do is demonstrate how deep this can go. There you go. So test 5a is underneath there. Um, and what I want to do now, let's let's pick this one because we want to go one step further to our, our fourth level of hierarchy. So we're going to do, and that will be 1h. So we'll do a child. That's going to be our parent request. And we'll do test 1h. So if you imagine that you had a, um, a project hierarchy with a work breakdown structure, so rather than request numbers, you're actually identifying the work breakdown structure number that you want to nest things under. This is where it starts to make a little bit more sense. And I have a follow up video that is going to show you a little bit more about what you can do in terms of adding adding rows uh, automatically into into sheets using bridge. Refresh that and we've got our next level down. So we've got one, two, three levels that you can collapse down there. So you can show, it's shown at almost every level, you can add, add new things and add things beneath them. Um, so let's expand that all again, and you can see the full structure there. One further thing to say is that to make it easier for your users to select uh, where they want to add new rows, uh, you could change this into something like a drop down list, and you could have it dynamically update using either Data Shuttle or indeed Bridge itself. And that would allow you then to have a drop down list within your uh, within your request form that they can select from that where they they've always got access to the latest uh, latest options that have been submitted and, and that will really help things as well. So there you have just a couple of solutions that show you how you can drive hierarchy within your sheets using Bridge. Now I did develop these a little while ago. I've learned a lot more since then and I would probably develop those slightly differently now using different the techniques that I've learned since. Uh, but in the context of the content that we have coming up, I really do think that they show off just a taster of what's possible. And, and with that content and with the solutions that we're going to be showing you, you'll really start to get a feel for how powerful Bridge can be and how it can really uplift your solutions to a high level. I hope this has been of interest. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now.